Hey everyone and welcome to the Maya Learning Channel. Today we're going to take a look at MASH Dynamics, which is a new feature for Maya 2018. Now if you're new to it, MASH is what's called an instancer, that is a tool that replicates a base object many times over and then makes it easy to animate those replicants into patterns. You'll see this a lot in motion graphics where even the simple things like cubes and spheres can combine into some pretty gnarly patterns. We already have a bunch of videos on that stuff in our motion graphics playlist, so today I want to tackle a different problem. While instances are great for animating things that move in regular patterns, a lot of things don't move in regular patterns. Oftentimes physics can play a large role too. Traditionally trying to capture this nuance of chaos has been slow and complicated, both in terms of performance and understanding. Honestly, it sometimes feels like you need a math and science degree just to do this stuff. Thankfully, with MASH Dynamics, this just isn't the case anymore, and I'm going to spend the next few minutes showing you why. So, rather than show off any particular effect today, which I'll leave for later tutorials, I'm just going to focus on how to set up a dynamic MASH network and get things interacting. First, I'm going to start by creating a basic cube, and then I'm going to adjust its base color to stand out in the viewport. Next, it's always a good idea to switch over to the MASH workspace, since it's specifically laid out for working with MASH. And now with the cube still selected, I'm going to click this button on the MASH shelf to turn it into a MASH network. That'll hide our original cube and display a bunch of reproductions instead, and also put a new MASH network in the MASH editor. You'll notice right off the bat that MASH arranged our cubes in this really boring straight line, but thankfully I can easily change that here in the network's distribute node. To recreate the big cube from the intro though, I'm going to go with a grid distribution of smaller cubes. And once that's done, making them dynamic is really just a matter of adding a dynamics node. And that's it. If I play the scene now, the cubes fall down until they smash into the default ground plane. Just give me a second to bump up the total frame count. There, that's better. So what does this actually do? Well, first it adds a dynamic node to the MASH network, which is where you can change a bunch of the cube's physical properties. For example, I could opt to make them really bouncy. Or a lot less slidey. But if I go back to the outliner, you'll also see that there's a new bullet solver there. This is the node that represents the dynamic forces acting on these cubes. So in here is where I can affect things like gravity, ground position, and so on. I'm going to use it now to move the ground up closer to the cubes. Uh, see the difference? This is also where you can add colliders to have the cubes interact with outside objects. So suppose I wanted to animate a sphere running into our stack. I'd start first by creating my sphere. Then all I need to do is middle drag it from the outliner to the collider objects field. This will make the bullet solver aware of the sphere so that if we animate it, like so, then the two will smash into each other just like we'd expect. What's cool now though is that if I go back and play with the shape of the collider like this, MASH will actually adjust the collision on the fly. Let's try big and skinny and see what that looks like. Cool. Anyway, uh, double-clicking a collider in the list will also bring you to that object's node, where you can adjust its dynamic properties too. So maybe I can try making it like a big bouncy wall. Well, I could have probably made it bouncier than that, but you get the idea. For now though, I'd like to move on to constraints. Constraints are a way of limiting the way that your MASH objects move. To create one, just go to the Dynamics node and right-click on the Constraints field. 
So if you look here, you can see that the default constraint glues each cube to their five nearest neighbors within this search distance. And sure enough, if I play the scene, some of the cubes stick together. Those connections are shown visually with these yellow lines. So if I expand or contract that distance, the yellow lines should change. Hmm. Unfortunately, that's a little difficult to see though, so let me try tweaking the grid a little. Okay, this is better. So now you'll notice that there are no connections between columns because they're too far away from each other. But if I play the scene, the cubes that are close enough still stick together. Of course, that's not the only kind of constraint. A spring constraint is like a glue constraint, except with stretchier connections. So if I just rearrange my cubes into a single standing lattice, like so, and then go back and enlarge the search distance again until those connections come back, we get a more malleable net effect. I could also say connect them to offset points instead of to each other. Let's say five units above. That would get me something more like a hanging beaded curtain. Or alternatively, I could lay them flat. Maybe raise the offset a bit. Maybe a little more. Or if I just wanted to shift the entire network up, I could add a transform node on top of all of this. That last point is actually pretty key, because one of MASH's biggest strengths is its ability to keep layering on effects by adding or changing nodes on the fly. So in that sense, Dynamics is just another tool in that arsenal. That lets me do something like, say, disable the constraint, then add a signal node, which is a sort of animated mathematical noise. I'll just expand this out a bit, like so. Then I'll bring the scales down a bit. which will get me a nice wave shape. And then I'll just remove the sphere. Of course, playing this just causes everything to fall down due to dynamics. Only by temporarily turning off the dynamics node can I see what the signal is supposed to look like. Ideally, I'd like to have this movement while keeping the cubes dynamic, and thankfully I can do just that using the dynamic node's mash bias attribute. This controls how much influence the bullet solver has on the cubes versus the rest of the MASH network. So if I just crank the position strength but leave the rotation at zero, then I'll get my signal animation back, except the cubes will spin whenever they collide with each other. And like I said, MASH's key strength is that I can just keep playing and experimenting, even going all the way back to the first decision we made by changing the distribution back to linear. Then I can change the type of signal animation from 4D noise to something based on trigonometry. I'm just going to disable that ground plane so it doesn't get in the way. That gets us something a little more atomic looking. Or what if I were to even reactivate the constraints? Maybe shorten them up a bit. That gives me a bunch of swinging cubes in the same pattern instead. Although the cubes still look a little stiff, so let me take a look at the spring options. The first thing I can do is increase their range of movement here. Also, the axes they're allowed to move on are quite limited right now, so I'll just give them full range of motion for both position and rotation. As you can see, that frees them to swing around a lot more, especially because we made them so bouncy at the beginning. Actually, I think this would look better in a more horizontal arrangement.
And I think the last thing this could really use is some trails too. I'll just widen them out a bit. And then flip their normals to face the camera. Actually, let's change the colors too. So I'll right click and assign a new material and just use a standard Arnold shader. And maybe make it red. Okay, that's enough tinkering for now. Let's just output this and see how it looks rendered. So first I'll add an Arnold Sky Dome light. And I guess I'd better add an Arnold shader to the cubes too. Mm, this time let's go with blue. Now just zoom in and hit the render button. And that's it. Thanks to Dynamic Collisions, we get all these fun spirals and other tail configurations that we wouldn't ordinarily get. Of course, that being said, this is still a fairly simple example with only four nodes and cubes, but you can imagine all the cool things that you could do with this. The best way to find out is to really just get in there and start playing around, but be sure to post your creations in the comments below. Otherwise, keep it locked to the Maya Learning Channel for more videos on specific dynamic effects and other Maya workflows.